Hi everyone, welcome to CR Space 2022 just outside Washington DC. I'm here on the Boeing booth with Rear Admiral Corey, the Admiral in charge of uh, unmanned aviation and strike weapons uh, for the US Navy and Marine Corps. Admiral, great to see you again. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, it's good to see you back. It's good to have everyone back. Absolutely. So uh, I just wanted to have a brief talk with you to get the latest on the MQ-25 program. So what's the latest? Yeah, so we've had a fabulous year. Um, we put the airplane into the air as we expected, but the last time we talked, we didn't plan to do air-to-air -air refueling. And so we looked at the overall program and how can we, we deliver this airplane as fast as we possibly could. And one of the things that we decided we could do is, is prove that we could do the air-to-air -air refueling mission. So we initially did it with an F-18. Um, some of the engineers were very nervous, and so that taught us how to handle hard problems how to work government and industry, our safe certification. It worked so well, we said, why don't we do it again? So we tried an E2D. Um, again, people got a little nervous. That's a big airplane. They haven't been tanking for a long time. It went very, very well. So we said, let's try it again. We had a short time period. I called Lieutenant General Fick at the F-35 office. I said, I really would like to be able to get an F-35 to tank off of MQ-25. In less than a week from my phone call, we were in the air, and you've seen the video um, a little while ago, we were able to get that done. We also went aboard the USS Bush. Uh, aircraft carriers in the US Navy are very busy these days, and so we got fabulous cooperation from our fleet, who were able to put the ship to sea. We were able to get our ground station on board, do initial checkouts. We were able to get the, uh, you may have noticed the, the, the uh, gear that the ground crew wears to taxi the airplane around. We made sure it could fit on the, on the catapult. We made sure we could, we could maneuver the airplane around. And then we took the engine and we, we moved it at, at all speeds that the carrier can go. So we had a tailwind and a crosswind during startup, just so that we get no surprises later in the program. So it's been a very, very busy and a fabulous year. All right, and what's next? So what's next? We're gonna begin uh, uh, building our first airplanes and getting them into flight tests. So this airplane that you've seen behind me was a prototype and Boeing put that forward as, a, as part of their effort to win the competition. Uh, then the, the final design is in build right now. So that is gonna enter flight test. The, also this, uh, this year in 2022, we're going to uh, put on contract the advanced procurement for the products for our first actual low-rate production airplane. So the others are flight test airplanes. Those flight test airplanes will be the first to deploy. These will be the second deployers, and we expect to go on contract in 2023, as was announced in the President's budget just last week. Uh, is there anything going on on the international front with uh, U.S. allies? Uh, for example, you may have seen uh, the U.S. Navy sometime, uh, the French Navy, sorry, sometime last year, released a video showing their uh, future aircraft care program known as PANG, and they show an MQ-25 in that video. Yeah. Have you seen that video? I and have what seen are your the thoughts? Video. It, 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 it made quite a splash over here, and so a lot of people were calling my office. Uh, thinking that there was more, uh, um, you know, official beyond that, and maybe we, we hadn't been talking. Um, you know, the air, anyone who operates from an aircraft carrier knows that range and the ability to refuel airplanes is critical to, to the ability to, uh, to, to transit oceans. Um, you can do it without a tanker, uh, but it's very, very limiting. And so, um, you know, there's only a few uh, folks in the world that operate uh, especially the, the people in the West, in the free world, that operate carriers with, uh, with tail hooks. And, and so we do get some interest, but right now there's nothing official uh, with the French. Uh, but we're ready to continue the, the talks, and if it works for both countries, we'd love to have another partner. And uh, further down the road regarding uh, MQ-25 or unmanned aviation, uh, so primary mission obviously are your refueling, secondary a little bit of ISR. Could the uh, MQ-25 ever be weaponized? Yeah, perhaps. We don't have a demand signal yet. Uh, certainly the airplane has plenty of growth capability. Uh, it was initially designed uh, to be a much more capable airplane in terms of combat capability, but that's not currently on our, on our uh, horizon in terms of a real program. Um, we are having discussions, you know, as we do with every airplane that we build. 
Um, what could the future be? What is the future growth possibilities? And, and, and one, for instance, is uh, to deliver supplies. Um, so we're not actively working this, but as a, as a concept, we have shown that we can fly 5,000 miles with 2,000 pounds of parts, for instance. I don't have a, a, a need for that yet. The Navy's not asking us for that, uh, but that may come around, um, I, I think, perhaps faster than, than uh, weaponizing, but who knows. What, what we know in our business that is unmanned aviation is the world is changing rapidly, technology is changing rapidly, and, and we need to be ready to adapt as well. So uh, oftentimes within a couple of weeks of a demand signal, we have new designs on, on uh, underway and, and in a handful of months we can put things forward. With this airplane, it might take a little bit longer because of the need to integrate on a carrier safely, um, but we have plenty of options in the future that the Navy and the Marine Corps uh, can choose from, should they choose. All right, Admiral, Admiral, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for seeing you, or coming out.